Good morning, everybody. Welcome to School Away from School today. It's good to have everybody tuning in for our devotions this morning. We're going to have a great day. It's chapel service today. And um, as you can see, I don't have a tie on because as soon as I get done here, I have to go to a doctor's appointment. And I really didn't want to have to wear a tie to a doctor's appointment. So let's uh, all uh, say our pledges and we will get started. All right. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. We thank you for this time that we can have devotions. We just pray that we might get something out of this today that we can use in our own lives, and we'll give you the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. The title of today's message is Let Us. Let Us. The past few nights, I have been having a bit of a problem going to sleep because of some of the medication that they've got me on. And by the way, those of you who are not in school, you can be thankful you're not here because I am on steroids. And when I'm on steroids, I have roid rage. So it, um, it's good for people to be away from me. But I was reading in the book of Hebrews the other night, and I came across this outline that I thought um, would be good for chapel today. And the title of it is Let Us. And you're going to see where I'm going with this as we get through the message. But in Hebrews chapter uh, 4 and verse 1, the first point is this, let us fear. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1, it says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, uh, any of you should seem to come short of it. You know, the the fear that it, this verse is talking about is not, oh, I'm afraid of, of something. You know, the fear that this is talking about is a jealous fear or a watchful fear waiting for something to happen that had never happened before. You know, uh, there are many today who are in fear of this virus that's going around, and they're afraid that, that if they get it, or come in contact with it, they're going to die. You know, this type of fear uh, is most uh, is more of a I'm afraid fear, and I don't um, want to catch what's going around. Now, the type of fear that this is talking about in this verse is a fear of waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know when he's coming, but we are to be watchful and we are to fear, with fear and trembling, wait for his appearing. He's going to be coming soon. And as things are starting to come together, uh, we can see now that uh, his coming is going to be even sooner than what we thought. Um, the second thing is this. Let us labor. In Hebrews 4.11 it says, Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You know, what kind of labor is this talking about? Well, it's not talking about working our way to heaven. We can't work our way to heaven. The Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And then in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So according to the Bible, we cannot uh, do enough work in order to get ourselves to heaven. So then what labor is this talking about? This is talking about uh, the labor that we put forth once we've accepted Christ as our personal Savior and building our rewards in heaven. According to the Bible... We can gain rewards and we can lose rewards depending on the amount of labor that we put forth for the Lord after we're saved. We need to be busy about our Father's business because our time is short. Our time here on this earth 
believe it or not, is very, very short. You think of 70 years basically as what a person lives. That's nothing in comparison to eternity. The third thing is this. Let us come boldly. In Hebrews 4.16 it says, Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. <clears throat> you know, this is a command for us uh, as we pray, we need to come boldly into the throne of grace with our request that we uh, want uh, to make known unto the Lord. The Bible says that we are not, we have not, because we ask not. And I don't believe there's any of us that come as boldly as we should into the throne of grace when we pray. You know, many times when I pray, I will thank God for allowing me to come boldly into his presence. It's a privilege for us to come into the presence of an almighty, all-holy God. But we can be assured that God has told us that we need to come boldly into his presence with our requests that we have, and he will answer our requests according to, the, uh, according to his riches in heaven through Christ Jesus. But we need to find that mercy that we need um, and the grace that only God can give us. And we can only find that by coming boldly unto the throne of grace. God does not want us to come with a minzy, pinzy prayer. He wants us to come boldly and let him know exactly what we need in our lives. I've said this over and over again, especially on Wednesday night in prayer meeting, that we need to be specific about what we're praying about. You know, God wants to hear, you know, I need healing for this, or I need healing for that, or I need financial help in this, or I need financial help in that. He wants us to be specific and come boldly into his presence. The, the fourth thing is this, let us go on. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, Therefore, leaving the prin principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on. Uh, unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and the, of faith towards God. You know, this is a very interesting statement. It says that we should go on to perfection. You know, how many of us can be perfect? There's not one of us that can live a perfect life because we're all sinners. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What that means is that there's not one of us who can take and live a perfect life. The only person that ever lived a perfect life was the Lord Jesus himself. The Bible says that we are to be Christ-like. What does that mean to be Christ-like? That means that we're try we should try to live our lives as Christ lived his life here on this earth. Perfect, sinless. However, being sinful man and living in a sinful body... We fall short of this perfection. However, we are still to strive or to try to reach that uh, perfection until the day that we are done. You know, I always think of the song, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Until that day, let us go on unto perfection. We need to go on and try to be as perfect as we can for the Lord Jesus Christ. The fifth thing is this. Let us draw near. In Hebrews 10, uh, 22, it says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Here again, we have to ask ourselves a question, where do we need to draw near to? You know, we need to draw near to the throne of grace. You know, the throne of grace, that's where God himself dwells. Um, that's where the mercy seat is. He dwells on the mercy seat in the holy of holies in heaven. You know, as we pray, our prayers are taken to him and the answer uh, them in his own way. In his own time. You know, but we are to come only to him in prayer. And he will answer us 
as we draw near to him with our request. We need to have faith that God will answer a prayer if we come boldly to his throne of grace and draw near to him and holiness. You know, there are not many people <clears throat> who come to God and draw near to him because I believe that they're afraid of God. I believe that they're afraid that if they would say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, God would somehow strike them dead with, with uh, lightning, and many people probably should uh, have that done to them. But um, God isn't that way. Uh, this is why we did not have our prayers answered many times as we should, because we uh, um, don't come uh, uh, and draw near under the throne of grace. This is why uh, our prayers many times just fall by the wayside. We, receive, we don't receive the blessings that God has in store for us. We need to come into his presence with our prayers. The sixth thing is this. Let us hold fast. In uh, Hebrews 10, 23, it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. The verse should read like this. Let us hold fast the profession of faith without wavering. If you notice the word our is in italics, that means that it was added in for easier reading. <clears throat> the verse, um, what it means is that we need to hold on to th that salvation which God has given us. Um, when I think of something being held fast, I think of a ship. If you think of a great big ship that comes into a dock, what do they do? They throw ropes over the side and they throw uh, chains over the side and they hold that, that uh, uh, ship uh, firmly onto the dock. That way, when the wind starts to blow and the, wind and the uh, waves start to slap against the, the ship, it's held fast right there. It does not move. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 25, it says, But that which ye have already held fast till I come. You know, Jesus said that, that we were to hold fast the doctrine of the Bible and the doctrines which he taught while he was here on this earth. We are not to sway to the right or to the left. We are to dig ourselves in and we're to be steadfast and hold fast uh, uh, on to the word of God. And the seventh thing is this. Let us consider one another. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, it says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to work and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. I did these two verses together because I want to show you what I believe that we need to do here at Florence Baptist Church and the school. With the uh, coronavirus going on, it's important that we consider one another. We need to be looking out for each other and those who may need extra help in this time of need. You know, we need, <clears throat> uh, there are many today who have taken advantage of the situation and are trying to make a quick buck, and we need to separate ourselves from them. You know, we as Christians need to be conscious of those who have a need, and we need to consider one another. You know, in this time, we need to be looking out for our neighbors. We need to be looking out for our friends and our relatives to see if there's any needs that they have. If there are, we need to try to make um, uh, those needs for them. But verse 25, I want to look at that one for just a minute. It says that we are, on, um, it says that we are not uh, to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, which means that we are to assemble ourselves on Sunday as a church. No matter what the government says or does, um, 
we have a constitutional right to take and meet in this building every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. Um, not only uh, desire, uh, uh, not only um, the desire of the Constitution, it says that we have that right to worship as we please, but God's Word also says that we are to assemble ourselves together because if you look at the last part of that verse, it says, in so much more as uh, we see the day approaching. I believe we are closer now than ever to seeing the Lord come back uh, because of the stage is all set. All of the prophecy had been fulfilled and the rapture could be at any time. You know, we need to assemble ourselves together uh, for fear um, to labor to come boldly to the throne of grace, to go and let us draw near to the mercy seat and the whole um, and to hold fast that which we have to consider one another. You know, this tonight we're going to have Wednesday evening uh, midweek service, and uh, everything in here is all set up. Everything's going to be sanitized. Everything's going to be ready to go for tonight. Um, Sunday morning we're going to have Sunday school at nine o'clock. We're going to have Sunday morning worship at 10 o'clock, and we're going to have Sunday evening uh, service at 5 o'clock. You know, you can make, if you can make the church services, fine. If you don't feel that you should, that's fine also. You can always watch uh, live stream. But I believe that now is the time when we need to be assembling ourselves together in prayer uh, so that we can go into the throne of grace boldly and ask God to take and help us get over this situation. But let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for today. We thank you for your love. I just pray now that you'll guide and direct us. We just thank you for um, all you've done for us. I just pray, Lord, that, that you'll help to let us um, uh, uh, fear, let us labor, let us come boldly into the throne of grace. Let us go on and let us draw near unto you and let us hold fast. And then let us consider one another. Father, there's no greater joy than to know for sure that one day you're going to be back after us. I just pray now that you'll help us and guide us today. Help us to get our pace work done. Help us to get everything accomplished we need to get done. Pray for the church service tonight. Pray that everything will go according to your perfect will. Be with us now, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you all got a lot to do today. We got pace work to get done, and uh, I'm really excited to see the paces coming in and the ones that are taking tests and, and getting everything accomplished. And I just um, um, I want to take and uh, congratulate a lot of you for getting as much work done as you have. Uh, it's an encouragement to me, not only as a pastor, but also as a teacher, to see uh, all of you getting the things accomplished you need to get done. So we've got a lot to do this week, we've got a lot to do next week, and we've got a lot to do the following week. And uh, so we've only got about two and a half weeks left of our school year, and then we're going to have summer school. For those of you who want to come to school this summer, we're going to be open and uh, so uh, that way you can work ahead a little bit for next year. Or if you're a little behind this year, you can get caught up. And uh, so we're going to be opening it up for summer school this summer. Now, I've got the third letter on here. And so if you think you know what that word is, you call in and talk to Miss Nancy today. And you tell her what it is. And today you'll have uh, how many points? You will have 15 points. Tomorrow you'll have 10, and the following day you'll have 5. So, all right. You all have a great day today. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, same time, same place. God bless everybody.